Hey guys and welcome back to the Velodicted channel. Before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and maybe you want to give this video a thumbs up. In this video I want to talk about the Radon Valence Disc 8.0 and it's the model of 2019 so it's really recent. To this date I record this video this bike is for sale. The original price, the re retail price of this bike is 2000 uh, euros. In this configuration actually it's only uh, 1600 euros so you can save 400 euros by buying it right now. Let's dive into the review of this Radon Valent and I want to show you first of all at least for me my important to know points i make a rough sketch of what you can expect if you buy this bike this bike is only available in a disc version there is no rim version at all to this point they ditched this model and really focused on uh, the disc bike model going for the disc model is a great idea uh, considering this is the future and more or less rim brakes are uh, at some point a niche product I guess. Make sure you know this is only available in disc to this date. The Valent is available in two models. This one right here the 8.0 is the lower grade model. I wrote down some key specs because I think these are the most important things to know about this bike. Let's go. We have a carbon frame and the frame is a aero attributed frame. Everything around this bike frame is considered to be aerodynamic. All the tube shapes are aerodynamically optimized. So we have an elongated shape. The seat post is aerodynamic and so on and so on. The big other part is the integration which becomes a real thing right now all the lightweight bikes and uh, aero bikes are really uh, built the way that no cables are exposed and all internally routed this is also a issue here on this bike because most of the cables are really hidden inside the frame and this is really nice um, nicely made and really a point of this bike if you're buying it. Mixture of components on the component tree. It's almost everything Shimano 105. And you have two things which are all Tegra and this is the rear derailleur and the front derailleur. Other than that, all components are from Shimano 105. The bike comes with a semi-aero wheel set uh, full chrome 400 db it's exactly the same like the racing 4 db but it's uh, a custom wheel set so it's called 400 db but it's actually the same like the 4 db rim depth is 35 millimeter nothing really shallow but also not very deep the material is of course aluminium the tires are Conti's but only Grand Sport, don't expect here uh, great tires. I leave that with a question mark but these tires are not bad but also not, not really good. Another big feature is the uh, integrated seat post clamp. Why that? Because the seat post also is proprietary to this frame and this whole thing looks really neat and I think this is a key feature of this bike. The braking power you can expect great braking power from the disc brake rotors because you have in the front and also in the rear 160 mm disc brake rotors. Speaking of the cockpit, you have handlebars and stem from the not so popular company Newman. This was a rough overview of the bike and the components and things. I think are good to mention and are kind of important to the bike and the bike build. I made a list with points I want to mention and these are pros and cons of things I noticed right off the gate of this bike. Starting with the cons, the headset integration is not that great on that bike. We don't have a fully integrated headset. I must say that 
This is a feature only the top brand bikes have. This bike has a great integration overall, but the headset is accepted from that. Overall looking of the bike, I mean, this bike looks like every other aerodynamically optimized bike. You can, for instance, take a System 6, a Venge, a Ridley, Noir SL, you name it. This bike looks exactly the same like every other bike, starting from the dropped seat stays and so on and so on. But this is the uh, positive aspect. I mean, if you want this, this is a great feature because way less expensive than some bikes of the bigger brands and you have a really modern looking bike. Another counterpoint is absence of quick releases on the through exits. Quick releases are not available. On the other hand, a positive aspect to that, considering this is an aero bike, this is also a positive aspect, I think, because if you have an aero bike, you want less frontal area. The shifting was not as perfect as it maybe should be. In the rear, especially, was poor. Gears were jumping. On the other hand, this was done and dusted after playing around with the barrel adjusters. It was done in around one minute and the problem was gone. In case of dropping the chain between your frame and your chain, you maybe can screw up your frame and damage it very intensively because there is no metal plate. Other bike brands are installing this kind of protection to the bike frame but in this case there is no this is a big downside another downside is the installation of not really promising uh, tires at this price point you could expect to have some conti gps grand prix maybe 4000 or even uh, 5000 or similar product from vittoria but that's kind of unfortunate appearance of the bike if you're unboxing it and just looking at it it looks simply stunning with the disc brakes and all the integrated routing of the cables it simply looks stunning to me no cables everything is really tidied up only the headset area is a bit messy but other than that the bike looks really cool the integrated seat clamp is really cool it adds up to the um, really neat look. There is no screws, nothing. There is this kind of silicon cover, which covers up the, the entry to the seat post clamp. Added up, this looks very, very neat. At the bottom bracket area, you notice there is a little hole. This hole is for a DI2 cable for your front derailleur. Take in mind this bike is fully mechanical shifting but if you want to upgrade the bike this is really great that you have the opportunity to route your cables your di2 cables and this bike is prepared for that this is really great gearing is a positive aspect to me following the line of aerodynamics you could expect to install a 5339 chain ring set in the front and really uh, big gears in the real. Not in this case, gears are really entry level friendly. Standard 5034 in the front and a 1132 in the rear. This is a good idea. I like that this aero bike have entry level gears for persons like you and me. Frontal area, you have a lot of adjustability options because you have two spacers underneath the stem. If you're getting used to the position and you want to get more aero, you have to work on your position and maybe you can adjust this over the stack height of your stem. Removing this, the spacers underneath, you can get a bit more lower. You can really dial in your position, clearance of the bike. You can really see in the front and also in the rear, you have plenty of place for bigger tire. Now, right now there are 25 millimeters installed but you are free to install 28 millimeter tires and maybe you can install 30s. I'm not really sure I didn't try that out but 28s at least should be uh, doable and I think this is a great aspect. 
coming to the riding experience, I rode this bike on a little test ride, 35 kilometers around town and to my regular training sites. I really had a good impression and comparison how it feels to my Rose aluminum road bike I personally own. Rattling shifters. These are the Shimano road bike shifters with a difference to my rose bike it's uh, hydraulic shifting i don't know what it is exactly but on rough terrain those shifters are rattling something internally i don't know if there's a bolt screw or spacer i don't know that was really annoying i really like to ride in a certain position on the hoods and this was a bit difficult on this hoods in the first place because they are a tad greater in size because uh, there is this hydraulic cylinder inside but also it's hard to describe what's the problem but i grip the the hoods in a certain way i have to compromise my favorite position on the hoods uh, due to that the bike position or the geometry at least for me was very upright the reason for that can be found in many answers for instance this particular bike frame is for my friend and he is a very tall man and i'm a bit uh, smaller this bike ends up being a l frame size and i would go maybe with the m or, or even with a um, S, I don't know exactly, but it was a bit upright for me, not very racy. Then I noticed uh, the different crank length, which come with a great frame. This one has a, a crank length of 175 and my rows have 170. I really noticed the great difference in rotation uh, radius of the cranks. Adding up to the noises from the uh, levers, going over rough terrain, all the cables in front, which are not integrated, are hitting each other and the barrel adjusters there were making a lot of sound. And I would, if I personally own this bike, try to get rid of this noise in front of the bike. That's it for the contrapoints. Let's go to the positive aspects and these aspects are plentiful first impression was going down a hill the braking was just superb the modulation the disc brakes all in combination was a great braking experience always it made me feel really secure if you're new to cycling disc brakes are really a positive aspect but also on the other hand maybe the braking is all, almost too good because there is almost no give of the brake let's say if you are really scared of something and you push the brakes the brakes are really biting if you are new to the sport and you're not used to that maybe you hit the ditch there is a lot of practice needed and adaptation time to get used to the great brake force of this hydraulic braking system once the problem of the rear derailleur shifting was fixed, shifting was really, really nice. Shift performance was crisp. You really hear the click and you feel the click. And I noticed a improved lever throw. The new Shimano 105, the latest iteration of it, have a shorter lever throw. It makes it even more easy to uh, shift. Speaking of sounds, besides the negative aspects I already mentioned, I noticed that this bike is really, really silent when it comes to um, the wheel set. The rear hub is almost not hearable because the ratchet mechanism is so silent and I really enjoyed this. Riding on um, smooth tarmac, the bike was almost silent. This was a great experience and I yeah, really uh, found that uh, fortunate. Two points. I don't know how to put this in a pro or con. First of all, the uh, stiffness of the bike. There is always the question, uh, is carbon stiffer? This is an aero bike and it's so beefy. Does it add up to an increased stiffness of the bike? I really don't know if I notice any stiffness increases of the bike. If I'm honest, I really can't tell you if it was stiffer than my Rose aluminum bike. I really wish I could say or I could tell it. I honestly don't notice this big of a difference it was almost the same uh, running experience from this point of view 
the other thing carbon frames are attributed to the increased uh, smoothness or comfort which uh, comes from the carbon layup uh, opposed to the isotropic properties of aluminium alloy frames the frame was a bit smoother i don't know what it was was it just the carbon seat post was it the frame was it the tires or the wheel set i can't tell you from just one test ride but what i can tell you is that the whole overall experience was a bit more pleasant than my road bike but it also can be that it was up to the more relaxed geometry okay uh, that's it already from this video i hope i could give you a overall impression of what you can expect purchasing this bike I really like the bike, unfortunately it's not mine. This is really a recommendation for buying this bike. Pro aspects are greater than the con aspects. Based on the price, for the price right now, the 1600 euros, this is a adequate price. 2000 euros, I don't think I would pay for that because there are bikes out there, more experienced brands, brands with greater reputation that build bikes as well for 2000 euros. So 1600 euros, I think this is a great deal. This is really a recommendation for this price and this bike. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Maybe you want to subscribe to the channel as I mentioned before. And maybe you want to give this video a thumbs up if you really liked it. And maybe you want to leave a comment if you have any question, don't hesitate and write them down. We will see us in another video. Velo Dicted. Cheers.